Hey guys, how you doing? This is Formal Liberty Graphic Designs. Today we're going to be embroidering this shirt right here. I already did the front. We're going to do the back. So don't go anywhere. I'll show you how to do the back. This is just one shirt, right? And I mean, for the video, it's okay. But the reason why I decided to make a video on just one, this one shirt is because the shirt is actually a name brand. It's by um, Ariad. Where's the logo? Right there. It's also on the neck, on the pocket. Where's the pocket? Right there. Okay, and the reason why I wanted to make this video is because, you know, from time to time, customers will bring us you know um, their own garments and you have to make sure that the customer knows that if you're decorating something that they brought you know from home that they went to a store and bought it um, that we are not responsible for any damages make sure you let your customers know hey we are not responsible even if i made the mistake so because the reason for that is i don't want to pay let me see if i can get it to focus Probably not, but this shirt says it's uh, $59, so $60. If I make any mistakes, I don't want to replace this shirt. Um, I don't want to, you know, come <laughs> out of my pocket $60 to replace the shirt. If the customer doesn't like to do that, doesn't want to do that, then you would charge him the price of the shirt plus your work for the embroidery. That's what the price will be. So in this case, it will be way over a hundred bucks for you to embroider this shirt. So with that being said, let me show you how I embroider the back of the shirts. We have <clears throat> this magnetic hoops system, but the logo that I made is a little bigger and it doesn't fit. As you can see, this hoop is a lot smaller. So I'm gonna use this one, this old system, which there's nothing wrong with it. It's just the magnetic hoop is faster and uh, it, it's also a little better. It doesn't mark your your garment. I'm gonna be using cutaway. This is perforated. I don't know if you can see it, but that's perforated cutaway. And then this uh, uh, this is also cutaway, but this is for like mainly what we use for hats. The reason why I want to use um, cutaway, I said cutaway. I'm sorry, tearaway. The reason why I'm using tearaway, watch. That's why it's called tearaway not cut away. The reason why I'm using tear away is because I want the shirt to be nice and clean on the inside so it doesn't have a big old piece of material in the back. So the first layer that I'm gonna use is gonna be that perforated one. And the reason why I'm using this one first is because I want that to be, because this is gonna be against the, against the back of the uh, customer. So that way this is a, a little softer it's the only reason why i'm using it and then this one is just for stability that's it nothing else just to to have some stability on it let me cut this because it's a little too big so for something like this cutaway you know the fabric the um backing that we actually cut away this one you got to cut it with the scissors this one doesn't tear for something like this, that will be better. Uh, you use whatever you want to use. Again, that's the reason why I'm using tear away. And then this one, this is something that somebody has asked me in the past. What do you do with that pleat? So what I did is I just iron it a little more, make sure it's flat. Okay, so what we do is we slide it over this hoop master thing, just like that. And then let me go back up so I can show you what I line myself with. See the hinges right here? They, um, this little hinge part right there. When I go to line up the shirt, I make sure that part of the shirt is the riding right here. And then this is the center. So I make sure that the tag on the shirt or the center of the shirt is right there. Um, the reason why I'm explaining that is because you guys are not going to be able to see it once I put it on there. So now see this seam right here? I'm going to line it up with the... Um, with the top or the bottom of that hoop master. And then in this case, 
we have the area logo is right in the center and also we have the pleat. So I'm going to line it up to, let me go back up so I can show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to line up the, see this right here, this little flaps? That's the center of it. So I'm going to line up the pleat to that center. That way I know that my shirt is going to be right in the center. So you can see it right there. See? And I'll move it just a little bit. And then uh, some people in the past asked me, what do you do with a pleat? So on the pleat, I just make sure that it's flat all the way down, just like so. And then I grab my upper hoop, making sure that if you guys are working with a Tajima, uh, Baradin, or uh, Ricoma, they have this little notch right there, and they're pointing up. Make sure that they point it up. So I start from the top. And slide it in there and I just hold it and I just hold it there and walk myself around and then right here I snap it in now if you notice I'm just making sure that it's in if you notice my uh, pleat is kind of lifting up so what I do is I just pull it so it's flat so when you pull it you don't want to pull up you want to pull straight, okay? So lift it up just a little bit and then pull it straight like that. If you pull up, this is going to come off. And then just make sure it's in place, just like that. And then pick it up, slide it, and your shirt is now hooped. Don't worry about those little pleats right there. You can actually pull them off. I'm sorry, those little wrinkles right there. You can actually pull them off just like that. So on a shirt like this, that you have a pleat, you don't want to pull from this side, okay? You want to pull, you don't want to pull this way because you're going to make the pleat do that. It's going to come off. So you don't want to do that. Just leave it like that and the machine is going to broder on top of it. Okay, so now we're going to load the, uh, the shirt. This is all my specs right here. This is my sheet. All that good stuff when we go to digitize. When you go to load the shirt, grab the neck part, right? The back. But make sure you got at least two buttons off. So you want enough play in there for the machine to go back and forth. So you grab the neck, slide it all the way in there so it doesn't fold and ruin the shirt. And then actually what you do is you lift up, stick your hands inside of it, make sure that the shirt is not folded in there to where it'll be folded like that and you embroider on top of it. So the next thing you gotta do, like right now I'm working on needle number four, if you notice, because if you're looking at number one, it'll look like it's off center. My needle number four, the first thing you wanna do, or the, or the most important thing you wanna do, is you wanna trace your work. Make sure that it actually fits on the, on the shirt. So the first time, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna slide the needle all the way down. I'm just gonna hold it, making sure that my, um, Whatever I'm gonna embroider is gonna fit on the shirt. And see, like right now, it looks like it's gonna hit, and it's gonna hit right there, right? And it looks like it's gonna hit right there. So now, a little trick that I do, this is the specs. Whenever we digitize, this is the specs. So what I do is I'll take the printout, and in this case, it's really big, right? So what I do is I'm going to take the, um, the printout and, and uh, tape it together and then I'll lay it inside and that will give me uh, the uh, true size in, in the uh, hoop. Let me do that real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. I cut all four pieces and um, the, the um, design is going to give you a center. You probably can't see it because it's, you know, it's the same color. But that's my center. All I gotta do now is place my center right underneath the needle that I'm gonna be working with. And that'll tell me if I'm gonna hit the, uh, the hoops. And if you notice, right now it's very close to the bottom. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it up just a little bit, making sure that, um, that my artwork is right inside the hoop. And I'll bring my needle down again, adjusting it. And this way I know that it's not gonna hit. Now watch, if I do the trace again, 
See, the, the, mach the machine is reading the top of it. That's why it looks like it's going to hit right there. And it's going to hit right here on the corner. See that? But now we know exactly where our design is. So we know that it's not going to hit. If you have one of the newer, the newer machines, the newer machine can actually trace all the way around the, the, um, the artwork. On this one, it does, and this one, it does just a square. That's why it goes all the way to the top, and then it comes back around, and it looks like it's going to hit your, um, your hoop. So do it one more time just to be on the safe side. And here it is, number four. I'm going to let it go because I don't want to hit the hoop right there. And then bring it over. See, it's gonna looks like it's going to hit again right there. And then we're good right there. See that? That's how we know it's not going to hit. And for those of you that want to know what's in this design, as you already saw the uh, logo, this design is going to have um, total stitches. It's going to be... Uh, one, I'm sorry, um, where's it at? <laughs> it's over here. It's 57,209 stitches. That's total stitches. Gives you the size. The uh, height, well, it's kind of backwards, but it's uh, 10 and a half by, by 10. And then uh, it'll tell you how much thread you're going to use on the bobbin and everything. And this is the uh, all the boring stuff when it comes to embroidery. Like, for example, the letters are going to be satin. And I'm doing a, a different type of satin, so the spacing is going to be 0.32. That's the density in another software. The length is 3 millimeter. The, uh, the uh, smallest is going to be 0.4. The uh, pull compensation, this is where a lot of people have questions on. The pull compensation on this one is going to be 25 or point, 0 0.25. Underlay, I'm going to do a zigzag and I'm going to do two underlays. Uh, zigzag and the, the uh, spacing or the density is going to be 4.4 on the first one and then 5 millimeters. I know this is really boring, but for some of you that wanted to see what kind of stuff I'm doing, on the actual horse and the uh, cowboy, is going to be the stitching is going to be tatami and then uh, density or spacing of uh, 0.3. Length is 4, 4 millimeters and the same pull compensation. Again, this is really, really boring. That's why I don't make videos when it comes to embroidery, but let's embroider this so you guys can see what it looks like. Let me, let me, I'm gonna stop it right there because I wanna, I wanna, I forgot to tell you. Let me bring this back up. When you guys are doing something like this that is a lot of hangover on this side, see there's the shirt, is, it's a lot of hangover. Don't start your embroidery at the bottom. Always start on the top and work your way down. That way the shirt is sliding up and it's not going back and forth. What I mean is don't let your dig digitizing software to start here and then go up. Because what that's going to do is going to fold the shirt underneath the hoop and you're going to mess up the shirt. So what I do is I always start at the top. It's going to broader the, the top and then it's going to broader the uh, center and it's going to finish at the bottom. That's uh, especially if you have multiple colors. This is just one color. So that's why my machine is going to start at the top. I, I just wanted to point that out. Welcome to my party. We're just getting started. A life is a dream or a nightmare scarring. Hand me a drink because I think I'm going all in. Get me a shrink. Who can catch me when I'm falling? Cover up my scars. Flip the handlebars. Crashing in my car. Wake up in a bar. I'll be a superstar. Just on my avatar. This world is so bizarre. Empty out the reservoir. Yeah. Shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think I'm going crazy Don't think I'll get on safe So I'm taking six shots all straight to the face I'm taking six shots, are you coming with me? I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop this way, so I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay. I think I'm going crazy. Don't think I'll get on stage. So okay, so this is done. Now, all we gotta do is obviously get it out of the hoop and cut the um, 
a little bit of dirt and cut the uh, the backing so but that's it you guys can see what it looks like I mean you saw the entire thing being embroidered right it's pretty good it looks really good it creates a lot of uh, trash Yeah, you create a lot of trash with this. A lot. But this is what I was saying. I didn't want the shirt to have um, a bunch of bulkiness on the back. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get all this little. Yes, I'm making a mess. I'm trying to get all these little pieces of. Otherwise, the customer's going to wear it. And I mean, they still got to send it to the cleaner, right? They'll send it to the cleaners and it'd be ready for them to wear it. But that's it. That's what it looks like in the back. And then the front is going to have the customer's name. Customer's name and the uh, logo. This is a horse riding club. So that's why you see that it's not misspelled. That's their name. And now we can turn, actually, I still got to do some other jackets, but we're going to turn it off for now. So that's it for the video, guys. If you liked it, don't forget to give it, a th give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about embroidery, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see, you know, how to, how to embro em embroider a certain garment, a hat, or whatever, let me know in the comments below. I normally don't do um, uh, videos about embroidery because... You guys don't watch them. <laughs> so thank you guys. It was a pleasure like always. This is it for this video. And I will catch you on the next one. Adios. Bye-bye now.